If you've ever tried running a tiling window manager inside of a VM, whether it be something like i3, Sway, BSPWM, DWM, DWL, whichever other window manager, right? If you've tried running that, you, you press super one to switch workspaces or super two, right? But what happens is the host intercepts it. So your guest WM is basically useless. You're stuck using a mouse like a freaking animal. And today, what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to fix this with Hyperland submaps plus three other use cases that will change your workflow completely. Now, the first thing we're going to have to do is, of course, go to the keybinds file so that I can show you exactly what's going on. So inside of config hypermodulesbinds.conf, okay, this is where my keybind configuration file is. And by the way, if you're wondering what this modules folder is all about, it's basically taking one file and splitting it into multiple files. This makes maintenance much, much easier. And you basically don't have to go into the same file and then keep scrolling for eternity in order to find the particular section that you want to customize. If you want to like make, learn how to make something like this for yourself, like make this modules folder along with a custom theme switcher like this one, basically all you have to do is just pick a custom theme in a list of different themes and choose whichever wallpaper you want and watch your entire system adapt to it. If you want to learn how to make that, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check it out. It's basically a program where I teach you exactly how to do this sort of stuff with over 10 hours of content, as you can see here. So in this theme switchers module, which is two hours long, I teach you exactly how you can do this sort of stuff. So if you want, you can go ahead, click the first link and check it out. Now, inside of this keybinds file, let's just, okay, it's saved, right? Okay, let's go back here, let's delete the swap file and now, here, if we go to the submap section, you will find out that we have a couple of different submaps set up. Okay. Now, the one that I showed you first was going to be the VM pass through submap. So let me move that to the top so that you can see what's going on. Okay, so let's delete all of these lines. There we go. Now, before I explain how exactly this VM pass through stuff is working, we need to understand what a submap is. Okay. And in very simple terms, if you've used the text editor Vim before, you're going to get a hang of this pretty easily. It's basically different modes. So in Vim, you have three different modes, right? But the modes that we're going to be most commonly using is either normal mode, where you are navigating through the file, okay, using H, J, K, and L keys. Okay, so it's either going to be normal mode, visual mode, or insert mode right? So in insert mode, if I enter insert mode with I, I can type whatever I want. And if I press HJKL, I'm not able to navigate through the file as usual. Okay, so that is what insert mode does. Then if I go into visual mode, I can navigate as usual, but then the cursor is highlighting whatever text that I am hovering over inside of the text editor. That is visual mode. So you've most likely already used Vim before and you're aware of these modes. Hyperland Okay, also gives you the same functionality to enter different modes in which you can perform different tasks called submaps. So you can create different submaps, like if you wanted to create a normal visual and an insert mode inside of Hyperland, you could do that with submaps. So let's say that's pretty much what we've done with these submaps over here. So with the VM pass through submap, what we've done is if we press super V, okay, super V, what's going to happen is we're going to enter a submap into a mode in which we can basically not do anything except just pass through whatever keybinds are being pressed on the keyboard in order or in the keyboard to whatever app is currently running right so now if i try and switch workspaces as you can see it's not working i'm pressing my mod key and one two three four but it's not switching workspaces however if i exit out of this sub map which is called pass through okay if i exit out of that it sends me a notification that says host mode hyperland key binding key bindings active which allows me to then navigate between the different workspaces on my setup. Now, the reason why this works is because of the pass-through submap, right? So what this submap does is basically takes every keybind, as I've already mentioned earlier, it just takes whatever keybinds are passing to your window manager and just takes that and then passes it through to the application. So if you have a window manager running inside of a VM, whether it be Hyperland itself or something like DWM, okay, that is going to be the app Okay, that is going to be the program that is intercepting all of your keybinds instead of the host itself. So that is how you can set up the VM password submap. First thing you're going to be doing is just entering the submap with super V. Okay, I call this pass through. And not just that, but I also, hold on, super V, right? Not just that, but then I also send a notification with notify send. Using notify send, I send a notification here along with this mode, 
the current submap being displayed inside of my waybot. After that, we just, okay, put in the pass through submap here, like so, and then we exit with notification. Pretty simple stuff. You can just copy this exact thing if you want to implement this VM pass through for yourself. Okay, now if we press escape, as you can see, it goes back to normal host mode. Then the second one after that is for window resizing. This is most likely what you're going to be using submaps for apart from the VM pass through stuff. So if I go into, first of all, let's make the window floating. Okay, now the window is floating. Now if I press my super key and R, what's going to happen is we're going to enter this resize submap where we can use the arrow keys in order to resize the window as we see fit. Now, if I try and type anything else, it's going to exit out of the submap, but this is not normal behavior. This is actually configured behavior, as you can see with this catch all key bind, okay? So to escape the submap, if any key apart from valid ones are pressed, you're going to have to use this catch all key bind inside of a submap to reset. The reason why you would want to have this line inside of any particular submap is because chances are if you forget the key in order to exit out of a submap, or if you just haven't bound that key, you're going to have to basically lose any unsaved data because you're going to have to switch to a different TTY and then kill Hyperland in order to log back in, right? In order to prevent yourself from going into that submap in the first place. So it's quite a mess, which means that if you want any key bind and any button pressed on the keyboard, apart from valid key binds to exit out of the submap, you're going to be using catch all inside of said submap. So that is what catch all does. And that's it. Now, if we were to step through this line by line, the first line is going to be mod R, which is entering the submap itself. Okay, so here we start a submap called resize, and here bind E. So E basically means repeatable. Okay, so now if I, hold on, let's make this window floating as well. Now, if I go to the resize submap, and if I pressed and held down any particular key, whether it be right, left, up, or down, the arrow keys, right? The window is going to be resized as whichever key that I press. Now let's exit out of that. Let's go back to normal. Great. That is basically for the key bindings. You can put whichever other key bindings that you want for resize. You can even put floating or full screen key bindings if you want that to be a part of the resize submap, the part of resize mode. Or otherwise, you can wrap it up with just these four binds. Then you can also add catch all if you want to. You can add this to this one. Okay, now there wouldn't make much sense for the VM pass through, but it would make sense for the other ones that we're about to cover. This one and the other ones. So you can use this catch all to escape if any key is pressed apart from the key that you're supposed to press. And of course, if you want to exit out of the submap, okay, this is to basically let go of any mod key. So this is for the indicating the non-requirement of a mod key. This is escape. So basically, if you just press escape, you're going to reset the submap. And here you're resetting the submap itself with submap colon reset. So anything inside of here, anything inside of submap resize and submap reset is going to be part of a particular mode, part of a particular submap. Great. Now that is for the second one, which is window resizing. The third one is window management. So to get in, we have to press mod W, which is going to put us inside of window management mode. Here we have two binds, right? Between this submap line and this submap line, we have two binds, which are going to be full screen. So if I wanted to press F to full screen, I can do that. And if I wanted to toggle floating, I can press shift F, which is going to toggle floating. If I wanted to move the window, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to exit the submap and then move the window, whether it be with my mod key and left mouse, or whether it be with a different key binding. Like if I press something like Control, Alt, and then move, okay, that's a different bind. But basically, if you wanted to move a window, you can't quite do it inside of the submap unless you've actually configured it, which if I were to show you how to configure that, it's somewhere over here, yeah. So resize and move windows using keyboard. So this is to resize. And if you were to move the window, that would be with super shift. So super shift left, right, up, down is going to move the window as we see fit. So let's put this back to where it was. If you wanted to put these binds there as well, we can just copy and we can put them inside of here. Okay, we can just paste it like so. Just right click paste. There you go. That's it. So we can do it this way as well. That way we can remove the key binds that were there earlier, and then make sure that they're only a part of this window management key bind, window management submap rather. Okay, and to get out, same stuff. And lastly, we have the media control submap. Now this one is actually pretty fun because in order to control media, we can just press mod key and M, which is going to enter into the media submap, right? As you can see, we're in the media submap. Now, if we press I, O, or P, it's either going to go to the previous song, 
play or pause the current song or go to the next song. Pretty simple. And then after that, we're just going to escape the submap and then reset and reset. And that is four submaps that we can use in order to make our experience of Hyperline much, much easier, faster, better, whatever you want to call it, right? Those are four practical use cases that we've discussed in this video. And also, if you want to learn how to make a custom theme switcher like this one, and not just copy somebody else's dot files, monkey see, monkey do, copy that, and then change a couple of colors and then call that dot file your own, right? If you don't want to do that, and instead you want to learn how to make something like this yourself, in that way, if anything breaks, you're actually able to troubleshoot it, and you're not left crying and begging for someone's help on Reddit, just hoping that they're going to read your message when they're probably busy as hell, right? So if you want to learn how to do this without having to go through all of those pains, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out Hyper Accelerator. In fact, as I've already shown you before, hold on, we'll just switch the theme again. There we go. Now, if we show you Hyper Accelerator, as you can see in this theme switches module, as I showed you earlier, I covered what theme switches actually are, the different kinds, how to set up wallpaper based theme switching, which is basically extracting the colors from your wallpaper and using those to theme the different aspects of your computer, whether it be your notification daemon on here with Overwatch or your actual notifications with this one or your logout menu or your lock screen. Right? So if you want to learn how to make this yourself, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check it out. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.